Hello everybody, my name is Jenny and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, we will be discussing methamphetamine practice considerations for the anesthesia professional. Before we, tend, uh, before we start to wrap things up, I do want to talk about serotonin toxicity. So when you talk about methamphetamine use, and you remember back from our other lectures um, that methamphetamine causes the re release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, that of course you're going to have some similarities between serotonin syndrome and or what's known as serotonin toxicity. Um, so I made this chart so that you can see the similarities and the differences um, between serotonin toxicity and methamphetamine intoxication. So if you have a patient who's just um, experiencing serotonin toxicity, they're not going to have um, some more of the more dangerous things um, like we'll see with methamphetamine, like the aortic dissection, pulmonary artery hypertension, right heart failure, cardiac arrest. Um, but you're still going to see hypertension, tachycardia, dysrhythmia, agitation, restlessness between both of these people. Um, also, if you notice in our other section, we do mention um, the placental abruption, which may or may not lead to fetal death. As we talked about in our last video, um, which was methamphetamine considerations for the parturient. Um, so if you want, pause it here, study this list a little bit more, but we're going to move on talking more about serotonin toxicity. So what are some anesthesia medications that can worsen serotonin toxicity? Tramadol, meperidine, methylene blue, and opioids. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to use these medications in the OR pretty frequently. Um, maybe not all of them, but depending on the surgery I'm doing, um, methylene blue for sure. Uh, opioids, I try to be a little bit more diligent and use um, lower... Um, opioid techniques, um, but still, if you use any opioids at all, you're always running the risk of worsening their serotonin toxicity. So what are some other medications that we use that may or may not cause um, serotonin toxicity? And this is the part that I find really interesting. So um, the WHO and the FDA released uh, reports of serotonin toxicity from Ondansetron. Um, I don't know how up to date you guys are in your OB, but in uh, 2014, a lot of researchers came out with information that said if you have a patient who goes into amniotic fluid embolism, uh, doing just CPR alone isn't really going to be the most effective. And they came out with protocols that said you should give AOK, -okay, which is um, um, <laughs> atropine, ondansetron, and catorolac. And the reason that they said you wanted to give ondansetron for amniotic fluid embolism is because they think that amniotic fluid embolism is also tied into um, this massive um, serotonin release, aka serotonin syndrome, aka serotonin toxicity, which causes um, your blood vessels to dilate and then just kind of this precipitous cardiogenic failure sort of um, thing that happens in pregnant women. Um, and they determined that doing the AOK -okay treatment, the atropine on dancetron catorolac, was very effective um, for women who had this when compared to um, just cardioresuscitative resuscitative, um, measures alone, like epinephrine, um, atropine, so forth and so on. Um, so it would stand to reason that if you're giving Zofran and WHO and FDA is saying, hey, it might cause serotonin toxicity, um, but then you're giving Zofran to treat serotonin syndromes, that not both of these things can be true. So there's kind of a, a call to uh, researchers like, hey, we really need to figure this out. Um, what are we doing? Um, so forth and so on. Uh, from the literature review that I saw, I tend to go with um, what ACOG says, saying that amniotic fluid embolism treatment of Zofran for a serotonin toxicity syndrome, serotonin-like syndrome anyways, um, is better and uh, you should still give it. So I'm going to put like a little asterisk in there saying that you probably are okay to use Zofran. I wouldn't necessarily avoid it, but um, definitely avoid the other medications like um, opioids, methylene blue, et cetera, if you can. What are the treatments for serotonin toxicity? This is kind of the nice thing when considering serotonin toxicity versus methamphetamine substance use disorder. The treatments are sort of the same, which is great. Um, so first and foremost, 
Benzodiazepines. Great. And it's the same kind of recommendation that I made in my other videos. Um, give every eight to 10 minutes, two milligrams up to about 20 milligrams. Yeah. 20 milligrams is a lot. I know. Um, and if you need anything beyond that, you can use Haldol, so forth and so on. Um, if you wanted to treat just the serotonin toxicity alone, like if you weren't kind of sure for serotonin toxicity versus, um, methamphetamine substance use disorder, or if you've given the benzodiazepines and it still hasn't done anything, you can give cyproheptadine or spiridone, or you can give um, dopamine blocking agents as well. Um, so serotonin toxicity might happen with methamphetamine substance use disorder patients, um, but just kind of keep in mind um, the treatments are sort of the same, which is nice. Deep breath is going to be okay. And then if you do have somebody who does present to the OR urgently, um, try not to use those other things as much as possible. I know that's a really uh, tricky thing for anesthesia providers to do. There you have it. Um, that's my wrap up on serotonin toxicity. Next time we meet, we will be discussing um, a fancy little algorithm that I have made um, for your viewing pleasure, which might help guide you in the OR. Um, if you ever have a methamphetamine substance use disorder patient that comes your way and you can't remember what to do. Join us next time. Thanks. Bye.